Alright guys, welcome to Upfront Games. Uh, we got a lot going on with the house today, so if there's any background noise, I completely apologize. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. We're still going to get through this. It is Sunday, so let's roll right into it. So, for PlayStation's trailer this week, Code Shifter. Go ahead and check this out. Alright guys, so that was Code Shifter. I chose that because it's in essence a uh, nostalgic type side-scrolling adventure. It's actually a pretty cool concept. Um, they're racing to fix bugs um, and I noticed that it is a Japanese trailer. However, um, if I read everything right, there's 30 different characters that you can control, uh, 70 different summons and 100 different actions. Um, that you can do throughout the game. So it does look pretty cool, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested in that sort of thing. Let's jump in further to PlayStation News this week, uh, where uh, Tetsui, Tetsui Nomura looks back on Kingdom Hearts 3 and ahead to Remind. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3 has been out for almost a year, and the Remind DLC uh, just came out. So Tetsuya says he's proud of the entire Kingdom Hills 3 game and he couldn't put anything out that he couldn't stand behind with confidence. He's looking forward to how Kingdom Hearts fans analyze the Remind DLC because they tend to do that with every drop of a Kingdom Hearts game and have a personal he has a personal attachment to Master Xehanort's blade if he could wield one himself. So it's a pretty cool little interview. Um, only a few questions, but um, it was definitely interesting to say the least. Now, moving on, just a quick reminder that a lot is swirling around the PS5 release information at this moment. Uh, one of the biggest being that on February 5th, the event in New York City will be breaking open a bunch of PS5 news from Sony itself. The hope is that we can finally see the design, the price point, and potentially some trailers for the system's game offerings. I guess we'll have to wait and see until February 5th, next Wednesday, to see what's in store. Alright, moving on to Xbox. Xbox's trailer for this week is Journey to the Savage Planet, which comes out on 128. So go ahead and check this out. Carbon based life form, large head of small cranial mass, also fat. for joining the Pioneer Program. Our scientists have identified several planets that may be fit for human habitation. Yours is... ERY26. Or you discover, the more we'll 
be able to guide your experience and highlight objectives for you and your partner, if you have one. Recent budget challenges, plus the unknown natures of the obstacles you will face, mean that we were unable to send you anything in the way of equipment. <gasps> That was Journey to the Savage Planet. It looks pretty cool. Um, it's very colorful, I'll give them that. And uh, it seems to be a very in-depth experience at finding a new inhabitable planet for uh, the human race. So, pretty cool. Uh, anyway, moving on. Ninja Theory announced Project Mara, a new experimental title that has ways of storytelling and our new ways of storytelling, I should say, and the first details include that it's a real world and grounded representation of mental terror. The goal is to recreate the horrors of the mind as accurately as possible. Ninja Theory hopes that it will showcase what could become a new storytelling medium. Ninja Theory, um, they have a, they've been working on a lot of things here and very hard at that on Bleeding Edge, the Insight Project, and of course, Sonoa Saga, Sonoa Saga, Jeez. Hellblade 2. <laughs> so um, they're, they've been very, very busy, and they're turning out a lot of great products. So um, go ahead and check that out. They haven't really released any details, but if you would like to just pull up Project Mar and read what's out so far, be my guess. It does seem like it could be interesting. However, um, it's going to be a while before that title um, comes to fruition. So, hey, uh, Seventh Sector is coming February 4th and is a window into the dark fantasy world of the future. It's based on a powerful corporation that specializes in the development of a military nature for robotics and weapons. The article and the recently released trailer don't say much about the gameplay, so I'd be curious to hear from someone who is interested in playing it when this title releases after February 4th. So if you could please come back to this video and let me know how it is because the trailer really says nothing and the articles have said nothing. And it is a rather cheap game from what I'm seeing. It's $16.99 on Xbox and I don't believe I even caught the PlayStation side of it. Um, however, it is releasing February 4th, so go check that out if that's something you're interested in or have been looking at. Alright, Nintendo doesn't have a release this week. Um, it's become few and far between here and there. Um, we'll run into a week or two that just doesn't have anything. Around the holidays, that was a lot of the systems just didn't have any releases. So we're just kind of winging it going with it. So. Uh, that being said, SNK has released a trailer for the second Samurai Showdown Season Pass. It's going to include four new characters that include uh, Mina Majikina, uh, Sugetsu Kazama, Aroha, and a mystery character that is strictly shown in the video and all the graphics as a few question marks. So who knows who that could be. Um, also, Bandai Namco has announced that the Samurai Showdown lead, Haomaru, will appear as a DLC character in the season or the second season of Soul Calibur VI. So look forward to that if you're playing it. Um, there are 12 exciting new games coming for Switch in February, and they include the following: The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance, Tactics, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Dark Siders Genesis. Snack World The Dungeon Crawl, uh, Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition, Under Night In Birth EXE, Late. Yes, that is the title. It's a little weird, but uh, yeah, that's what's coming. Um, Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection, Samurai Showdown, Two Point Hospital, Rune Factory 4 Special, 
Metro Redo, Last Light, and 2033, and Dungeon Defenders Awakened. So those are some things to look forward to coming out on Switch. Moving on to Stadia, who again, we're not highlighting any releases because at this point, they're not, they don't have anything that's exclusive to, to Stadia or a regular rollout of titles. So that being the case, we are leaving the release alone for Stadia as is. Now, I've got a couple things here. You know, from what I'm, there's a correction to this first one, and we'll get into it as soon as we get this out. So, um, Stadia 2.2 perhaps zooming in on captures, assistant, and more. In the 2.2 update, it seems that they are introducing some new code that points pretty clearly to the ability to pinch to zoom on captured screenshots, which is not currently available, and the ability to take screenshots from an Android device, except in the protected areas of the game, much like streaming certain titles where you can't share this cutscene or what have you. Um, so Google Assistant support is getting a minor update to do a little more than launch a game, which is pretty much all it does at the moment, but not much is explained as far as what it will do. And finally, on the Android front, once again, they're going to improve being able to see your achievements on Android devices. There's nothing in the article from 9to5google.com stating that when the update will take place, but it will automatically download as soon as it is available. Now, that being said, in the follow-on article dealing with Android TV, it was listed that uh, at that point the 2.2 um, update had dropped and has already uh, been downloaded, processed, and all that good stuff. So that update is out there. So you can probably check release notes on the Stadia 2.2 update to get information on exactly what is being put into place. Now, moving on to the final article for this week, an Android TV has been listed as a supported device for 2020. The problem seems to be that any Chromecast embedded TV that was released prior to Stadia that catches an update, like one that was touted in this article as being a Philips TV from 2015, it will get a failed to initialize message upon launch. Um, stated later in the article is whether or not 1080p Chromecast will soon get Stadia support and how far back Stadia is going to go when it comes to supporting the older generation of Chromecast that's embedded into a TV. Um, now, I guess those of you that have Android-based TVs, a lot of them are probably newer than the 2015, but if they're not, you'll have to wait and see how far back Stadia is going to support if that's something you're interested in. So that's it for this week, guys. Um, we are nearing the end of the month, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I think, honestly, what I'm going to end up doing is a roll-up of what's going on with PS5 at this point because of the fact that their event is February 5th. So for the end of the month, uh, look forward to that as being our video that drops on the 31st. Uh, that being said, always, as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, and do what you can to kind of push this out. It'd be much appreciated. Um, I'm trying to build this channel up so I can start doing some giveaways and some cool stuff like that. But uh, until we start moving forward and be able to get this into a, uh, a more subscriber-based um, not so much paid by a subscriber, but people that are actually steadily watching the channel. I'm not going to be able to do that just because, I mean, financially, I'm giving away to four people. Um, it just doesn't make sense at the moment. However, um, I'm looking at about 50 people. That's when I'm going to do my first um, giveaway, which will be, it'll be worth it, trust me. So, um, that being said, uh, have a good week, and we will see you on the 31st because that is going to come before next Sunday. Have a good one, guys, and as always, thanks for watching.